I was a theater kid. This will surprise no one. Well, actually, if we're being technical, I was a speech and debate kid, and specifically the speech side of speech and debate, which is for theater kids who are like a little bit too competitive. But we hung out with the theater kids. And when you hang around theaters, you discover that theater folks are a highly superstitious bunch. Many people know that you should never wish an actor good luck before a performance. You have to instead say, break a leg. And did you know that there's a superstition that you should not whistle while backstage? Supposedly, it has something to do with confusing stagehands. And of course, there is one particular Shakespeare play which is supposedly cursed, and its name must not be mentioned anywhere near a theater. Actors will often call it only the Scottish play. Theater kids do love drama. But there is one theater superstition that is particularly evocative, and it's one that has become all too relevant these last two years. It is the tradition of the ghost light. In almost every theater is a stand with a single light bulb on the end, often in a cage. Before the last person leaves the theater at night, they roll the stand to the center of the stage, turn it on so that it can burn all night and cast a dim light on the theater. This probably originated for practical purposes, Owing to their intentional lack of windows, entering a pitch black theater can be dangerous at any time of day. There are stories of people trying to find the light switch and falling into the orchestra pit. So lighting a single bulb offers an inexpensive way to provide just enough light for the safety of whoever enters the theater first. These lights are sometimes called equity lights, perhaps because they were required by the contracts of union actors or stagehands. There's also a story that when the lights in theaters ran on gas, uh, dim, dim lights were kept burning all night to prevent the buildup of pressure on the valves. But because theater folk are superstitious people, it's not usually called the equity light, it's called the ghost light, and it's there to keep the ghosts at bay. Most theaters you see are haunted, and precautions need to be taken to appease the ghosts. The Palace Theatre in London, for example, keeps two seats in their balcony permanently bolted open to provide seating for the ghosts at night. The ghost light prevents haunting spirits from running amok while the theatre is otherwise unattended. As one theatre professional explained, if we leave a light on for them, they won't bump into the scenery or our props and move things around. At the beginning of COVID lockdowns nearly two years ago, many theaters canceled their performances mid-run. The casts and crews left the theaters not knowing when they would be back, and they were kept away longer than any of them could have imagined. And many theaters around the world set out their ghost lights to keep with this old tradition while the theaters remained closed. Some theaters that had long given up the practice of having literal ghost lights in favor of automatic safety lights built into the facilities went back to the tradition of ghost lights for their symbolic power. As Angie Sullivan of the Sydney Opera House said, she couldn't find any of the old ghost light stands in the building, so before they left for lockdown, her electricians threw together modern versions with LED bulbs, of course. She said they're less of a safety feature now and more of a symbol of hope. We're coming back and we're leaving a single light on just to show people that we aren't gone for good. We Jews know something about keeping a light of hope burning. There is a light that we keep kindled hanging above my head right now. We call it the Ner Tamid, the eternal light. It was probably never intended to be used to safely navigate the sanctuary at night. Unlike a theater, a synagogue must have windows. But, like the ghost light, the Ner Tamid has always been a symbol. And it finds its roots in this week's Torah portion, Tetzaveh. The parsha opens with these words. You shall further instruct the Israelites to bring you clear oil of beaten olives for lighting, kindling lamps regularly. The phrase in Hebrew is strange. The meaning of La'alot Ner Tamid is unclear. Rashi holds that the that it means routinely kindled, as in kindled at regular times. Nachmanides understands it as continually burning. 
The tradition tends to side with him. Most sources understand this to refer to a constantly burning flame, an eternal light. Though the commandment in the parsha seems to refer only to the Israelites' sanctuary in the wilderness, the rabbis of the Talmud connected its light to the menorah in the ancient temple. And since at least the Middle Ages, synagogues have kept a light burning above or near the ark as a nod to this commandment. But it's not a requirement. A synagogue is not obligated by Jewish law to have a near tamid, and it's uh, often not a literal flame. Today, almost all of them are electric. The bulbs, spoiler alert, do go out, and the world does not end. One simply changes it as soon as one can. And many synagogues are starting to explore more environmentally friendly near tamids, like LEDs or even solar-powered options. But however we do it, we keep the near tamid burning as best we can, because like the ghost light, it communicates something about who we are and what we care about. Perhaps the Ner Tamid represents the light of Torah, Torah Ora, if you will. Proverbs declares the commandment is a lamp and the Torah is a light. We place that light as a beacon before us, guiding our way, just as God placed before the Israelites a pillar of fire that led them through the wilderness. Perhaps the Ner Tamid is a representation of God's presence that dwells in us and among us, the Shekhinah. The Midrash teaches that the lights are eternal to remind us that God will never depart from us. Perhaps this is what the psalmist means by the words we sang at the beginning of our service this evening, Or Zarua la tzaddik, u lev simcha, light is sown for the righteous, radiance for the upright. When we dive deep into the study of Torah, we plant seeds of divine light in the world. We open up the possibility of God's light shining brightly in a world that is too often too dark and dim. In our parsha, it says la'alot ner tamid, which could mean kindle, but it also means lift up. We raise up God's light in the world with our righteous actions. But the light is also us. The Jewish people are often in our tradition compared to olive oil. And so when the verse commands, tell the Israelites to bring clear oil of beaten olives for the lighting of the Ner Tamid, perhaps it is telling us to bring ourselves to the task. Like the oil, we are at once pure and beaten. And yet we can bring the fullness of ourselves as a light in the darkness. It says bring the oil, not make it, because it is already in us. We are that olive oil. It is not just that we can bring out God's light in the world. We are God's light in the world. Or Zarua Latzadik, we are both the seeds and the sowers of light. The need for eternal light acknowledges the existence of darkness. In fact, light and darkness were the very first thing that God made on the first day of creation. But the mystics believe that, believe that creation started even before that. Before there was anything, there was only light. And at first, God tried to capture that light and put it into vessels. But the light was so big and so expansive that it shattered those vessels, spreading shards of that divine life, light into all of creation. Only then did God separate light and darkness as God began to create the universe as we know it. And in the last hours of creation, God made us as vessels where those shards of light could live. God says to humanity, I cannot make a world that is all light. It would be impossible to sustain. So I made a world of light and darkness that has you in it as a ne'er tamid, an eternally burning light. These past almost two years of pandemic have shown us the darkness. They have shown us the hardship and the trial of isolation, of injustice, of death. But they have not been without light. It has shown most distinctly when we brought our, out the light within ourselves through acts of kindness and service, justice and righteousness. Theaters put out ghost lights to remind everyone that darkness is not the end, that the night will be followed by dawn. They keep their bulbs burning to say, we aren't gone for good. And we have kept our light burning through hard times in the past and in recent days, and through joyous times in the past and in recent days. 
with the beaten but clear oil of our souls as a testament to hope. There is a debate among theater people about exactly what the ghost light does for the ghosts. Some say that it is about quieting the ghosts or at least limiting their mischief. But there is another tradition I like even more. The ghosts you see are performers too. We leave the light on in the theater so that at night they can put on their own plays and walk the boards once more. This, to me, is what hope looks like. We do not put out a light to banish the darkness. Rather, we put it out as an acknowledgement that even in the darkness there is possibility. We can acknowledge the sadness of death and loss, but recognize that it does not mean an end to creativity or expression. We set out a light to hear the voices of those who came before. We set out the light to make space for others, the ghost light, like our own light, is not a denial of the darkness, but a way of living through it. On this Shabbat, may we find more light. May we find more light in ourselves and so more light in the world. When we encounter darkness, may we always remember that God creates us to be lamps, burning eternally. May we lift up our lights so that they illuminate the path ahead. And when we shine our light in the darkness, may the voices and the wisdom of the past echo to the future like plays performed by joyful ghosts in empty theaters beneath the soft, warm glow of the ghost light. And in that way, may we continue to find hope. Shabbat Shalom.